Hello there people of the internet, this is another video in a series that I'm making trying to earn my way up to 100,000 subscribers. I'm showing off all of the different kinds of guns that I have and uh, hopefully this video earns you a subscription. If not, then I'll try again tomorrow because I'm trying to show off basically everything in my arsenal and I'm making a video every single day or at least trying my absolute best to pull that off. Today we are going to go ahead and look at this right here. This is colloquially, I think that's the word I'm looking for. This is normally known as the 1858 Remington. However, the 1858 Remington is a nomenclature given to it that is actually incorrect because these handguns here actually did not start uh, entering mass production until 1861. Now, these right here were used extensively in the American Civil War right alongside with the Colt pattern open top revolver. This particular one is a 1851 pattern, but of course they had the 1860 and all the variants that came between them. And there's just too many varieties of Colt revolver for me to really go into them all. There's the Walkers and the Dragoons and the 51 and the 60s and the 61s and all the things that came in between. And then there's uh, the speculation of Navy versus Army calibers and 44 and 36. And it, there's just a whole lot to go into whenever it comes to these revolvers. But we're going to go ahead and talk about this one right here. The uh, 1858 Remington, as we know it today, was uh, a competitor, quote-unquote competitor, for the Colt revolvers. Of course, these guys right here had been in production long before these guys had shown up in 1861. So as a result, the foothold that Colt had on the revolver market was uh, dramatically stronger than Remington would have on the revolver market. However, uh, in 1863, I believe it was, uh, Remington ended up going to the United States government and they offered to sell them these revolvers for just over half the cost as what the government was buying these Colt revolvers for. So as a result, these right here did get some popularity with uh, the United States forces, particularly Union forces, just because of the cost of the handgun in comparison to the Colt revolvers. Now the Remington revolver, both of these are going to be 44 caliber. This one right here just has a shorter barrel, but the Remington revolver has a full frame uh, of on on uh, the handgun on the. Uh, well, the frame, what am I trying to say here? The frame uh, eclipses both the top and the bottom of the cylinder right here in comparison to the half frame revolver that the Colt design had, which is an open top right here. As you can see, there is no frame connecting the top of the revolver to the rear of the frame, unlike what, uh, unlike what we have right here on the Remington. Both of these are single action only, meaning every time that you want to fire one of these guns, you have to pull the hammer back and that will rotate the cylinder, pull the trigger, and there, there will set off a round. Both of these are cap and ball revolver. And what that means is that in order to fill these, you have to pour powder inside of your chamber, each individual chamber, then seat a projectile inside of them. Both of these have a ramrod built directly into the handgun itself to be able to seat rounds into uh, the chamber that is on the revolving cylinder. And then you just kind of put a percussion cap on each of the cylinders there. This particular one has issues with the hammer, so it doesn't always, or not the hammer, the little arm that lines up the cylinder. So that doesn't always line up whenever I pull the hammer back. But whenever you pull your hammer back, in theory, if you have a fully functioning revolver, pull the trigger, hammer goes down, revolver gets set off, goes bang. And uh, both of these designs were rifled, so they were fairly accurate, especially if you're using something like conical bullets. So with these right here being used in the United States government uh, alongside with the Colt revolvers, these right here were being uh, uh, charged. Is that the word I'm looking for? Uh, Remington was charging less for these right here than they were for the Colt revolvers. And so as a result, these right here definitely gained quite a bit of popularity. These right here are also a significantly stronger design with the uh, top of the a frame actually connecting the front of the frame to the rear of the frame, unlike on the Colt revolvers. Not only that, but the actual lock work and how the cylinder stays inside of the revolver is significantly stronger than the old school uh, designs of the Colt revolver. These right here are actually strong enough to be able to handle 
uh, modern smokeless powder, whereas something like an open top revolver like this, they can handle small, uh, modern smokeless powder revolver or smokeless powder cartridges. However, uh, with this open top being an open top, the frame is a lot weaker. And so as a result, even with modern smokeless powder cartridges, you can only use the lighter weight cartridges like say 38 Special or 44 Special. Whereas if you get yourself a modern uh, style revolver with the 1858 pattern, uh, you can actually load these to some pretty spicy rounds. I have seen these chambered in 357 Magnum. And so that is a direct representation of the strength of the frame in comparison to a full frame versus a partial frame revolver. Now on the Colt pattern, this is not a Colt, this is Pieta, but it is identically uh, modeled after the Colt. On the Colt pattern, if you manage to, I don't think that I can do this with my bare thumb, but if you manage to pull out this uh, uh, locking block right here that is held in place with the screw, if you manage to pull that out, the front barrel comes right off of the gun and it separates from the frame itself. And then our cylinder right here will actually slide off the front as well. And that is a strong enough design for black powder. It kind of works-ish, but this right here is a much stronger design where the actual retaining pin for the cylinder is held in place by the, uh, uh, the, the ramrod for the system. So in order to get the cylinder out for that, you actually have to open up your ramrod and then you can detach your uh, actual retaining pin for your cylinder. Pull this out and the cylinder comes out. I'm not gonna do that because I don't feel like putting that cylinder back in. But uh, that right there is a much stronger system than a simple locking block holding your entire barrel and front assembly onto your handgun. So these are very, very strong systems in comparison to the open top revolvers. Now, 1861, a uh, good, oh, I don't know, 10 years later or so, the Smith & Wesson patent would actually expire on the uh, board through cylinder. So as a result, companies like Remington and uh, Colt here would be able to uh, manufacture revolvers that have a board through cylinder. And that means that they were able to swap over to cartridge firing revolvers like uh, Smith & Wesson was using. So cap and ball revolvers, uh, well, they were good for about a decade whenever they came out, whenever this pattern came out in 1861 and was mass produced, but they were uh, a little late to the party in comparison to where cap and ball revolver technology was supposed to be. Colt showed up with uh, this style of technology in about 18, 1830s, uh, some, sometime in the 1830s, and uh, it really revolutionized how firearms were going to uh, be used, because this right here is a firearm that you uh, can load and then fire more than once before you have to reload, and that was definitely something that was unique so uh, during that time period in the 1840s whenever the walker revolvers and the dragoon revolvers really became popular in the 1850s uh, this right here was a really really good uh, representation on where firearms technology was going to go however by the 1860s whenever these right here were being mass produced uh, this technology was already very well known very well produced by colt and very well implemented by Colt. Colt was absolutely all over the place, so Remington definitely got there at uh, at the end of that game, especially considering that a decade later, cartridge firing technology would be uh, very much the predominant go-to, especially with uh, Smith & Wesson losing their patent for the board through cylinder, so now anybody could make a board through cylinder for cartridge firing technology, and Colt takes full advantage of that. We'll go ahead and we'll cover uh, where Colt goes with that on uh, the next video. So I think this right here is all I have to say about this. I normally would go out and send a couple of rounds through these uh, handguns, but I actually don't have any black powder. And so as a result, I'll just have to splice in some footage of me shooting these things. So with that being said, I'm just going to say, hey, folks, thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. The description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day, and I will see you guys on the next episode.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. 